excited to be here with you today chatting about the Tranquility Du Jour Daybook and how to use it most effectively. So I've got my computer here. Of course, I have my day book, and then I have a lot of different tools too to work with. So I encourage you to do the same. If you wanna have, like I've got a stamp. Um, I have some of my favorite ephemera type pieces, doilies, the library cards that came in your ephemera packet, also uh, manila tags, which are just always fun. And of course, I have peonies because they make me very happy. And then tea and water. So I encourage you to do the same, you know, just to keep yourself hydrated and, and to make sure that you have everything you need for our session today. And I just want to kind of go through and tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing, what this is all about. The first thing was really to share the story of the day book. Like, what's it all about? Why did I create it? And how is it best used? However, I want you to know that what I'm going to share with you are simply suggestions. So for you, you may want to do something completely different. So I'll give you some options on different ways to work with it. And then I'm also going to, at the end, well, kind of the, the last portion of it is to do some playing together. That's why it's called a play shop instead of a workshop. And so with this, what we're going to do is actually use some of our tools and pull some things together. So we're going to be looking at the year dreams the month dreams, and then also our wheel of life for winter. And if you've already done it, no worries. You can still kind of go through this process because it'll be a way to explore some more ideas on how to use it. If you're international and you haven't gotten your day book yet, A, email me because you should have. And um, Hillary, I'm thinking of you. And um, also, you know, if you don't have it in hand because you left it at the office, Gina, <laughs> or you just don't have it handy, no worries, because what I'm gonna do is just show you some tools and techniques that you can use whenever you have it. So you can just take some notes in whatever form you'd like. Okay, so that's kind of the rundown for our time together. Also, there's Q&A time. Oh, <laughs> Tim's over here, like tech support, fabulous Lebo, and uh, he's just showing how it's working on his phone. So yay, we know it's working. And is that, aren't these like lights, so fun. We were very excited to put them up there. This is a mason jar in case you can't tell. Tim was very excited. That was his idea. And then behind these peonies, there is a second one. You can you can kind of see it if the peony isn't blocking it. Um, but yeah, so mason jars filled with holiday lights. So that was our, our big exciting kind of setup. All Tim's idea. So also, if you have questions, because we're going to do a little Q&A at the end. Those of you who were here for the anthology book launch, which was so much fun on Black Friday, I want to say thank you, A. And then also, it's the same way. It's the same way we're going to do questions. So if you have something that comes up and you're like, how in the world do I do X, Y, Z in the day book? Just send an email to Lebo, L-E-B-E-A-U, at KimberlyWilson.com. Now, also... You can hashtag Daybook in Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and then Tim will kind of be scanning to see what questions come up in those formats. So please feel free, whatever you're most comfortable with, and then we'll have time at the end for Q&A. So with that said, let me also just begin by saying happy, happy new year. Can you believe it's 2015? It's just like, it's amazing. And it's funny to think that those of you who were here for the anthology book launch, you know, that was over a month ago. And it's, it's just amazing how quickly we were talking about how quickly the holidays have come and gone. So, I mean, there's still the weekend, so never fear. And then for most people, it's back to work on Monday. So for these next few days, I really want to encourage you to do a lot of what I encourage, what I think of as reflection and action. Okay, so on New Year's Eve, I led a workshop at Tranquil Space at my yoga studio, and it was all about mindfulness and yoga focused on the new year. And the idea was to do some reflections, reflection around what it is that 2014 meant to you what it is your intention may be for 2015, and then some action planning. So that's kind of what we're going to do together here also, because, you know, New Year's resolutions are huge right now, right? Everyone's talking about what do they want more of and less of in 2015. And that's really what this book is done to do is to really kind of pull together what is it we want more or less of in the new year and how to stay on top of it, not just setting intentions at the beginning of the year and moving on, but actually, every day being mindful and cognizant of it. 
Okay, so that's what we're doing here today. And then also, I want to just massive gratitude to say thank you for, I'm trying to think of all the fun countries this went to. I mean, I know Australia, the UK, France, Scotland, of course, the US, of course, Canada, and um, Mexico, Puerto Rico. So lots of fun places. So I just want to say a big thank you for supporting this and for your feedback. This is our third edition. And it started in 2012, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And it's this is my favorite edition, but I think every year I'll probably say that because every year it'll be tweaked a little bit more based on your feedback and based on my feedback uh, as somebody who uses it every day. So thank you for everyone who's passed along input. I really, really appreciate it. Um, also, I wanted to mention, for those of you who aren't aware, this year I'm starting a free program, 52 Weeks of Tranquility. So basically, every pretty much every Monday, you're going to get a love note from me that is encouraging some form of tranquility for the week. So there's going to be a focus every day for the entire year of 2015. And it's a free program. All you have to do is sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter can be found at KimberlyWilson.com slash love notes or at the bottom of every page of KimberlyWilson.com. So you just have to sign up for that and then you're set. And this will all come through via email. And also there's a private Facebook group for it. So, and then we've been hearing from all sorts of people. I think there's 200 people so far from around the globe. Again, it's so fun to see lots of global listeners and readers. And uh, again, free program. So if you'd like to tune in and also a reminder that there is a day book private Facebook group. And it's just, it's fun from time to time. People post photos, people show the tools they're using, uh, the washi tape, washi tape addiction. So those of you who have washi tape, please grab that for our program today. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's a fun way to stay connected with other people who are quite like-minded, quite like-hearted and wanting a little more tranquility in every day. So I just wanted to mention those two offerings if you're interested I also just want to say a big shout out and thank you to Carol Myers, who did a lovely review of the daybook and helped with some of the editing to Tim for putting this event on all the tech stuff. I like just do the programming and he hangs the twinkle lights and, and makes everything go online. And then, of course, Christy, who is my designer, who just did an amazing job at it. And of course, you for supporting. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, Louie wants up. Louie, come here, honey. So here's Louie. We fed him hoping that that would keep him kind of quiet for the programming, but apparently not. So here he is. He'll probably be snoring through most of it. Um, he doesn't get very as excited about the day book as I do. So again, logistic wise, just have your pen, your journal, of course, like if you have a journal that you'd like to use, this is for those of you who don't have your day book. But for those of you who do have your day book, this is going to be your journal for today. Washi tape, which I showed. Okay. I was exposed to this maybe four or five years ago and I was like, really? Like, how ridiculous is this, right? Now I, I probably, I get them a lot of gifts, but um, now I probably have like 30 of these. And this is one of my favorites. It's a gold chevron. So fun. Um, so chevrons, polka dot stripes really are, are great to play with. And I'll show you how I enjoy using them in the day book. Um, so having that nearby, and again, a cup of tea, water, something to keep you hydrated and comfortable during our time. And just a reminder about snapping any photos. I love to see them and I love sharing them. Those of you who follow along with the love notes and then on the blog, you will you may see your photo because I like to kind of pull them off social media and share. So um, if, you, if you have the opportunity to snap, please do. And again, just use hashtag daybook. And then also, it's my phone ringing. <laughs> and also uh, the hashtag or, you know, of course, if you have a question, then go ahead and, sorry, my phone, and go ahead and uh, send that to Labo at KimberlyWilson.com. All right. So I just want to set the stage for a typical program, right? So a typical workshop, there's twinkle lights, not always with mason jars, but there's usually, I try to have twinkle lights. I love to have fresh flowers, music playing, a candle lit. So these are all things that if you have, you know, nearby, it just kind of gives you the idea of the setting for what a workshop typically is. And the great thing about doing it online is those of you in Scotland can join. You don't have to come to Washington, D.C. at a particular day and time to be here for a workshop. And oftentimes with workshops, the one that's probably most applicable to what we're doing today is an art journaling workshop that I 
do from time to time. And that's the great thing about the day book is the day book can serve as kind of, um, I tend to write notes when I'm at conferences in it. I tend to use it as a journal and the inspiration pages. And then of course I, I plan my entire life in it. If I were to lose my day book, I wouldn't know where to go tomorrow. It's, it's, it's like, I'm really attached to it. So that's, you know, typically when I would do a workshop like this is around an art journal experience and art journaling is basically for those of you not familiar, art journaling is basically a way to bring dreams to life in visual format. So you may be like, well, how is that different than scrapbooking? Scrapbooking is more about memories and art journaling is more about dreams. And Carl Jung said we dream in images. And so that's why I encourage not just writing, but pulling in images and really layering and collaging your book. All right, so kind of that's typical stage. So kind of picture that with what we're doing today. You can kind of set your own ambiance with that. And of course, why we're doing online, comfort of your own home. No one sees you, so you don't have to be on. I've been in this all day, pretty much was in it yesterday. You know, it's like I did put on makeup today since I was going to be on camera. But for the majority of the holidays, I've just kind of been living um, very au naturel. And that's the great thing, too, is you don't have to show up anywhere at a certain time because this is recorded and you can watch it later. You can even watch it again if you want to go through some of these exercises. And ideally, this offers a chance to go through the components of this day book and determine how best to set up your year for optimal support, because that's really what this day book is about, is about supporting you and having more tranquility. And again, they're my suggestions and tips. So some of them you may want to scratch and create your own. Totally fine. I totally encourage that because really, this is all about you and this is all about having the best life possible for yourself. Now, why the day book? So in the back of the day book, at the very back, I told the day book story, which I thought was fun on page 199. And so the idea behind the day book is, you know, for years, I, I'm a, I mean, I've always been a paper planner kind of person. I remember one time showing up, this was college and I had this little tiny day book. It was like a, based on this great magazine that's no longer around called Victoria. And it was all about like Victorian stuff, really, really pretty. But anyway, I remember showing up to one of my advisors with it and it was all laid out and color and, and he was so shocked by it. He was like, I have to take this and show my colleagues. So he took my planner to go show someone else. And I think it's because he was making fun of it. He wasn't impressed by it. And so, you know, for years, I, I've just always been very much like a paper person. I love the tactile nature of it. I like to be able to write in different colors. You know, as I showed you, I have tons of like different markers. These are honestly my favorite. And these are the ones that I put in the ephemera packets. They're just basic Crayola ones, but they don't typically bleed through. They don't typically smear. Um, and they come in all sorts of great colors and they're a wonderful thickness. You know, um, typically for something thin, I tend to use this, which is my favorite, which is a flare pen, which I love these pens. They're by Papermate. Again, they don't bleed through. These are really great if you want something thinner. If you want something a little thicker, then I really, really like these. Sharpies are great too, but Sharpies are probably going to bleed through. So I'll typically just use Sharpies if I'm writing over like a doily or if I'm writing over a tag that I've put into my day book. So just kind of keep that in mind with regard to how to use the, the tools inside. So, you know, so that's me. And I had the typical kind of black and white planners and I liked them, but I just found that, you know, I was adding color just through pens and I thought, gosh, it'd be so great to have a planner that's colorful, that's feminine, that has pink, because what I would do too, is I would collage the front of my, of my planners, you know, which, um, it was nice to have one that's already done, but of course you can collage over this also. So then in 2012, after, uh, you know, a few requests and people saying, well, why don't you try this or that? And thinking, oh, there's just no way. I, I did it. And we had really, really great feedback. And then throughout the past few editions, got more and more feedback on how to enhance it, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And, um, and so here we are. This is edition three. And again, I have to say it's my favorite, um, but I'm sure next year will be even more of a favorite. And so... The thing in 2012 with the launch is I had just recently created Tranquilology as an e-course and it was a 12 month program that now is a book. And 
there were eight tools for daily, eight tools for weekly, and eight tools for monthly that we'll talk through. And the ideas behind those was to infuse the days with a little bit more tranquility. So if you turn, those of you who have your day books handy, if you turn to page 158, I just kind of want to go through these because you're going to find these as checklists. You're going to find these as checklists on your days. You're going to find them on your weeks and you're going to find them on the months. And I want you to know a little bit more about these, where they came from and why. And I also want you, as I mentioned, to feel free to alter these in any way you'd like. So daily, these are the things that, you know, from what I've tried, what I practice, what I read, what studies show really can help us be as productive as possible, but also really enveloped with this dose of self-care. And that's what I'm hearing from so many people is missing in life often. And my hope is that this helps infuse that and make it more a regular part of your routine. Okay. So number one is morning routine. This is, it can be five minutes, it can be 20 minutes, but the idea behind this is that you have something you do every morning that sets you up for success that day. And it, it ideally doesn't involve grabbing your smartphone first thing. Okay. So maybe it's spending a little time with your animals. Maybe it's spending a little time with your partner. Maybe it's going for a walk. Maybe it's doing a little yoga. Maybe it's a cup of tea. You know, maybe it's as simple as this for a few minutes, but it's something that you do consistently and regularly. Two is daily dress up. So just getting yourself ready every day. And, you know, even if you wear a uniform or you tend to wear the same thing, you know, maybe it's putting on earrings, it's putting on a ring, it's, you know, it's, it's in some way fancying yourself up to face the world. And even people who are stay at home moms or people who work from home, I've heard how powerful this is to kind of get yourself ready, even if you're not going out into the world. Number three is mindful movement. So this one's just so critical. Mindful movement is this idea of just getting your body moving every day. Again, it could be five minutes. It could be an hour. That's great. However, I want you to know that it's not so much about the quantity. It's really about making it part of every single day. Maybe you walk to work. You get off a metro stop earlier and you walk the rest of the way. Number four is eat your veggies. You know what I tend to do with this is I will have a smoothie in the morning or a green juice and that kind of like knocks that off. It's like, check, you know, because I've, I've consumed it. I may not have eaten it at that moment, but I have consumed it. So you can drink your veggies too. And green juices, uh, green smoothies, things like that. And there's a recipe even in the book are just a wonderful way to get your veggies. Number five is journal. And that, of course, you can do here in your day book. And I even have some journal prompts for you, which I'll talk through the table of contents in a moment. But there's some great journal prompts. And honestly, my favorite journal prompt whenever I'm feeling a little like, oh, there's a blank page, I don't know what to write, is how am I feeling right now? And that can be physically, mentally, emotionally, what's going on. Number six, goal review. So goal review is to look at what is it that you set out at the beginning of the year, your year's dreams? What is it that you have for the month? What are your month's dreams? What are your MITs? Like, so what are your bigger goals? Because what can happen is we can go through day to day to day and forget about these big overarching things because we have groceries, we have laundry, we have kids, we have pets, we have partners, we have jobs, you know, and it's like, then we can come to the end of the year and be like, Oh, or the end of the day or the end of a life even and be like, oh my goodness, what did I do beyond kind of the day-to-day minutia? And so that's this whole point behind goal review. Seven is gratitude. So of course you probably know this, but studies show that people who are more grateful are happier. So every day, just thinking of one thing for which you're grateful. You can note it, you could note it in your day book, or you could simply just pay attention to it. And there's even a gratitude list. That's something new that I added into the anthology and into the day book. And so you could use that as a wonderful resource, adding something there every single day. And then number eight is evening routine. So this complements the morning routine. And that is, you know, for me, I like to read personally. I also like to take a hot bath. Those are kind of my go-to evening routine pieces. Uh, kind of crawling into bed and pillow spray. I'm a big pillow spray girl. I have like five pillow sprays by the, and I haven't bought them. They've been gifts. Um, so I don't have a pillow spray purchasing problem. However, I do love pillow spray 
particularly have a nice peppermint one, but it's just great. You know, little things like that. I have my earplugs. I have my eye pillow. Uh, so it's like setting myself up for, uh, you know, like a, 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 a beautiful kind of tranquil sleep. I, even sometimes I like to spritz perfume. So that's just, that's my evening routine. Yours could be whatever. You could go for an evening walk with your dog. So, but that's just one way that you close the book on your day. So think of something that would really resonate with you. It could be a couple minutes, could be an hour. Next are our weekly tranquility tools. And really think about which one of these resonate. Which one are you like, huh, I really like this. I'm going to start doing this because these are in your planner. These are in your day book. So if you want to check it off, if you're somebody who gets that satisfaction of checking it off, you want to pay attention to these and think about which ones do you want to start working on. Number one, planning your week's MITs. I highly encourage this. So the thing about the week's MITs, this is something I typically will do Sunday night, and it's three to five things that I must accomplish. Pretty big project related. They're not necessarily a task, not necessarily. They're usually a project which we'll talk more about in a bit. Soaking in the tub. So I encourage that those of you who don't have a bathtub, you can still create a really sweet experience in the shower. There's these little tablets you can put in your shower that are um, effervescent and uh, provide aromatherapy. So that might be something you like, but just like this ability to kind of soak and melt into the bathtub. I just, I find, you know, I always think how gone take me away. Those of you who remember that commercial, I think it was from like the eighties. Number three, take a digital day off. Now, not everyone can do a day. Maybe it's a few hours. Maybe it's half a day. But I really, really encourage this. And I tell you, the days that I do this, the next day, I'm not jonesing for my phone in the morning. It's really interesting. I'm like, oh, it's been kind of nice to not know what's happening. And it, it really gives the brain a bit of a rest. So I highly encourage this. Number four, clear clutter. That's what I plan to do all weekend long. I'm heading back to DC and I'm going to just be, my goal is to get rid of 10 to 25% of stuff in the house. And I recently read somebody, uh, Courtney Carver, I had interviewed her on the podcast maybe two years ago. But one of the things she said is whenever they downsized, I think from a 2000 square foot place to 750, she got rid of 75% of her stuff. I just thought that was amazing. If you really think about what you use and what you don't use, it's, it's shocking. And that's why our online book club book is what it is. And those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, just go to the blog, uh, tranquillitydujour.com, and you'll see it in the lower left-hand corner. Number five, pen a love note. So this is a perfect time to be doing a lot of those because you probably have a lot to do because of holiday thank yous. Number six, buy or pick fresh flowers. We can get peonies right now. I think this is probably the end of them until May, which makes me so sad because they're my favorite flower. Number seven, take an artist date. So this is a critical, 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 critical component. And I have tried to add it into my weekly kind of layout, which I'll show you all. It's uh, a trip to a flower market, trip to a farmer's market, going to a museum, going to a cafe and just sitting there and writing, just kind of getting out of your element, but going to a space that allows you creative infusion. And then eight, of course, savor a green juice. So, oh, oh, and um, just to mention, if you are looking for a juicer, I have a Breville that I got on Amazon. Okay, so um, just got a note from Lebo. He said, no emails yet. May want to plug Lebo again. So <laughs> I'm plugging Lebo. Um, so feel free. You can send emails as you'd like, Lebo at KimberlyWilson.com. But he said a few Instagram super cute ones from Catholic Vegan Mom. So thank you. Um, thank you, Tim. And I love our, our low-tech uh, way in which we communicate during these. <laughs> um, but I want to plug the Breville. And I'm not a spokesperson for them. So, But they're a small, compact. And I think it was only maybe $100. We got it on Amazon. But we've had it for the whole past year and a half, two years. And it's a really, really great juicer. Okay. So our monthly tranquility tools are crafting your month's dreams, which we're going to go over that. We're going to do that together. Uh, Manny Petty volunteering. So this is a focus on giving back and what ways can you give back advocating or activism? Number four, entertaining, having friends over, even if it's just one person coming over for tea, it'll encourage you to clean the house, which is always a good thing. And it will also encourage you to kind of put on your inner Martha Stewart-ness, if that's a word. <laughs> review your budget. So I use mint.com and I try to review it on a weekly basis, but definitely on a monthly to just kind of look through the budgets. What have I overspent on? What 
did I underspend on? Yay. And just paid attention to that. Some people like to do completely hard copy where they just kind of go through their receipts and then they look at it every month. Read two books. So on my to do for this month is essentialism. It's like I wanted to say existentialism, but it's essentialism. And I'm really excited about that book. Just started it. Number seven, create. So this is something you can do in your artist state, but what could you create? What is it you want to kind of bring into the world? So maybe it's time with your novel. Maybe it's your knitting a scarf. Maybe it is your baking cookies, but setting aside time once a month, it's like, this is my creative space. And then eight is massage. So those are some ideas of the tranquility tools. Again, they're just suggestions. So and they're laid out in the back of the book. So definitely pick those up. And some of you are going to be quite familiar with them. You've been working with them since 2012. And I just want to say thank you. And I'm curious too, which ones do you, are you really drawn to and which ones do you struggle with? So table of contents. So page three, I just want to kind of go over what is in your day book and why. So manifesto, this is something I created for the anthology and I just think it's really sweet. Number five is a bonjour, just the welcome. Number six, we're going to work on together this year's dreams. Number eight or page eight, this is our planner pages. So this is, we're going to talk through the layout for these, which is really kind of fun. And I had a PDF created that is on the daybook page at KimberlyWilson.com. And that provides all sorts of ideas on, I see there's, there's 10 ideas on how to use the, the planner pages. And we'll talk through those. Then there is the year's review. So this is something you would do at the end of the year. However, if you wanted to put in 2014's end of year review in this, you could definitely do that. And it's basically just like thinking about what are your highlights? What worked? What didn't work? What are the lessons learned? Then we have the seasonal wheels of life, which we're also going to do together. Then we have the eight monthly, weekly, daily tools that we just talked about. Page 161, we have reflective journal prompts. So this is for whenever you are like, hmm, I'm not really sure what to write about, but I want to do a little bit of thinking, a little bit of pondering, a little bit of musing. There are some suggestions. And they also were part of what was a piece on every single weekly layout last year. And then so I just kind of pulled some in so that you could you could grab from them since this year we have tranquility tips in them. There's quotes to inspire, which was part of the Daybook 1.0, which were inspiring quotes. There's a gratitude list. So this goes along nicely with what is encouraged that you do every single day. So you could write into this on page 166. And I really like this layout. I think my designer did a lovely, lovely job on pulling this together. So the gratitude list, you probably are quite familiar with it. And then creating your own list. So that's space to do so there. Um, the next, these are tranquility thoughts. So this I put in the anthology and then I also pulled it here, which I just love. And it's, it's kind of like Mad Libs for tranquility. So the mindful check-in, this is something you could do every single day. You could do it a few times a day, right? So you may even want to pull this into your journal. Seasonal reflection, this is something that would be really great to do now if you haven't yet. And I mean now after we get off the phone, but now is in this time of the year. So my intention for the season is what? By what date? So one thing to think of is by March 21st, by the next season. I want to finish, read, clean, forgive, try, make, write, cook, bake, etc. And, you know, some of these aren't going to resonate because maybe you don't cook or bake. But some of these you may. And so I encourage you to do this seasonally. And then the last one, I like to have takeaways. Every time I go to a workshop or I go on a retreat or I uh, lead a retreat or I go to a conference. And so these are for takeaway capturing. I recently attended, completed, or read blank. And I am glad or not glad I did or happy or ecstatic or disappointed. My biggest takeaways were what? I plan to take action steps based on what I learned. And because of this experience, I'll live differently by what? So, you know, for instance, I just finished that, the book, The, Art, the Magic Art of Tidying Up, or it's, it's such a fun title, um, but it's the online book club feature. So I just finished that. So it's thinking of like, what are the action steps? Well, I'm spending the weekend decluttering. And because of this experience, I'll live my life differently by what I really like about the book is she talks about objects having or having feelings towards objects. So it'd be like, does this bring me joy or not? If it doesn't, toss it. And that's the same thing with regard to clothing, with regard to kitchen appliances, et cetera, of just really what are the feelings behind them?
So I really, really, I really resonate with that. Then, of course, you have my kale chips, favorite kale chips and green juice recipes. Dates to remember. These are great for birthdays, anniversaries, launch dates. You've got 2015 and 2016 at a glance. And then you've got your inspiration pages. So these are blank pages. So I started kind of putting some things into them. And then at the very end, you've got the love note and daybook story. Okay, so those are kind of the overarching pieces, the table of contents. And if there's anything that you're still like, I'm not sure what to do with it, just send us a note and uh, we can definitely be sure to answer that. Okay, so the weekly layout. How in the world do I do my weekly planner pages? So if you turn to, let's see, page, page 10 in your day book. So what I've done is I pulled together this PDF, and I'm not sure how great you're going to be able to see this because it's laminated. There we go. Kind of, you can see that. But anyway, I'm going to talk through the different pieces of this. And just so you know, this is available on the website, KimberlyWilson.com. Okay, so there's 10 different components to it. So if you just look at your weekly layout, I'll walk you through it. So the first part is eye candy, right? So this is the very, very top right here. So that's just a little inspiration for you. It's, it's something that I've snapped along the way. Number two, you can put here the week. The, the first day of the week, or you can put your intention for the week. So number three, this is our weekly checklist. So you would check that off whenever you have done them. So what I've done so far for next week, so this is for next week, because I've planned my MITs. So voila, I can, I can get one done. Even though the week hasn't started yet, I've still planned my MITs. So that's number three. Number four is writing the MITs. And again, these are three to five projects or top things that you want to have completed that week. All right. So number five is a tranquility tip. And the, there's different tips for the entire kind of layout. And just so you know, too, every month has five weeks, even though many months you just need four. So there's actually going to be extra weeks. And the reason is, since this is dateless and some months have more days than others, that's how we did it so to make sure you would have plenty of layouts. So you, you're going to have some extra layouts depending on when you start your book. And you could use those for collaging or journal writing, etc. Okay, so number six, right here, these are our daily. So these are daily checklists. So last year we had them at the bottom, we got feedback that at the top would be more helpful. So we moved them up to the top. Number seven, you put in the date. So you put the date next to the day. Now, this is where I get a lot of questions, okay? So here, these are where you need to be at a certain time, right? So this is number eight, the, the eighth kind of item. And this is really just uh, listing your day's appointments. Where do you need to be when? Number nine, this is your day's to-dos, okay? So, so far, I haven't filled in much for next week of the particular days that something needs to be done. But those are my daily to-dos, and these are things that will happen within the schedule. Now, the bottom part, so number 10, the very last piece, these are for the week. These are your week's projects. So these aren't aligned with a particular day. So I break them out by businesses, Tranquil Space, Tranquility Du Jour, Tranquility, Tranquil Space Foundation, personal things that I need to do. And then this is uh, my social work supervisor. So things I want to talk to her about. So these are for meetings, you know, sometimes I use it for meetings. And then, you know, sometimes I'll just use this blank one for ideas. Um, but these are projects. So these are not related to a particular day. But under your schedule, this is related to a particular day. Now, of course, you can use this however you want. However, I just wanted to tell you kind of how it was designed. So again, the idea is you've got your, your daily schedule, then you've got what you want to accomplish that day, and then you've got projects for the week. Okay, so hopefully that helps clarify a little bit how best to utilize the weekly layouts. And if you, again, if you have questions around that or ideas or suggestions, please pass them along. One thing we did this year too is we added a little more space, and you'll see here what I've written with is this darling, I love these markers. And again, that's what came in your ephemera pack. And it's just a little thicker. And this right here was written with 
a flare pin, a thinner flare pin. Okay. And then, so, you, you know, you'll see like, these are where I need to be and when. So I've got the seasonal podcast. Please join that, by the way. I forgot to mention that. That's a free event on Monday at three o'clock, kind of talking about new year, new you. It'd also be a nice little launch for the 52 weeks of tranquility. And then, you know, we've got like where I need to be at a certain time or, or even like if I don't need to be somewhere, it's what I'm going to be doing. So Tuesday morning, you'll know I'll be writing because I put it in my day book. Okay. So hopefully that helps with the overarching layout. So now we're going to play a little bit. So I encourage you to have your tools nearby. And again, if you have any questions about this, please let me know because I want it to be as user friendly as possible, which is again, why we created this great little how to, and I hope this is, this is a helpful piece. So now I want you to turn to page six. So what we're going to do together on the call is we're going to do our year's dreams. We're going to do our month's dreams and we're going to do the wheel of life. All right. So go ahead and turn to page six and year's dreams. So what I've done, and again, this is just a suggestion, and I didn't have any of my cute magazines. The magazines I like to use are Flow. If you don't know about Flow, it's amazing. It's Dutch. It's the cutest magazine ever. You can get it at bookstores like Barnes and Noble and what have you. And I think you can subscribe. Well, you can subscribe and get it online or get it delivered also. Um, they even have an app, which sweet Cynthia gifted to me. Thank you. By the way, it's the sweetest thing. Anyway, it's the best magazine out there. So there's Flow. Then there's also Stampington magazines, which are super cute. There's art journaling, um, artful blogging, like all sorts of great things. And that's typically what I'll pull from when I'll collage, but I didn't have those here with me. So I just wrote it out. And I wrote it out again with my markers, because if I were to use a Sharpie, I'd bleed through. But if I had put down collage imagery, then I would right over that with a Sharpie. Okay. So go ahead and spend a few moments writing out what are some of your year's dreams. Okay. And I'll share mine just in case they're helpful at all to think about. Also, I'm going to ask you a few questions before I share mine to help get you kind of thinking about your year's dreams, if you haven't already done that. And if you have, and you haven't put in, put them in there, go ahead and put them in there. And if you have already put them in there, I want you to think about these questions to see if they add any more fodder for you. All right, so where would you like to go in 2015? And this could be physically, mentally, emotionally. What would you like to do? How would you like to live? Who do you want to be with? How do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? And how do you want to spend your time? So one thing I did, and this has been such a helpful tool. And those of you who listen to the podcast, you've heard from Laura Vanderkam many, many times. She wrote 168 hours, right? So she's got this great little spreadsheet that you can download from her website. Her website is my168hours.com. And I love to do this. I go through it regularly and then update it. So this is my ideal kind of week for 2015. So it shows where I'm going to be certain places at certain times. It, okay, these are all sleeping. Love, love me some sleep when I'll be taking yoga, when I'll be teaching yoga, when I'm at the Women's Center. This is where I do my part-time therapy. This is date night. This is medit morning meditation, right? So these are all sorts of things. I also have <laughs> Friday is family time. So I, it's also events, you know, sometimes I'll have workshops or things like that. So this is a wonderful way to think of, you know, what this is last question I just asked you is how do you want to spend your time? is a really great way to think about it by putting it down into a weekly layout. And again, you can get very colorful. You can, of course, use washi tape. You could really make this super fun. I just use markers. Um, Monday morning and Tuesday morning, Friday morning is writing time. I'll be working on tranquility work. That's my clothing line on Tuesday afternoons. Downtime, scheduling that in from 10 to 11 if I stay up till 11, but 10 to 11 every night. So that is just one way of my ooh, scheduling a weekly layout that ties into my year's dreams because the way I spend my weeks, really ideally my days, really ideally my moments are what my year is going to look like. 
So some of my year streams that I pulled together, and you can see if any of these resonate for you. And of course, there, there's there's more. Um, there's more that I've thought about since I created this. I did a blog post last night with all of these. Where one is be present. So to try to really be present with the people in front of me, with the situation at hand, just this idea of keep coming back to the breath in the present moment. Number two is monotasking, single tasking. And you've probably heard this or read this. Studies show that multitasking makes us dumber. <laughs> um, boo, that's a little discouraging because I had gotten really good at multitasking. But what it shows too is you cannot sustain it and you can't be really strong at something whenever you're kind of going back and forth to multiple things. And I definitely agree with that. So that's the beauty of this book I'm reading, Essentialism. Uh, that might be our next online book club offering because it's really, really good so far. Again, I'm just at the beginning. But this idea of really paring down to what's essential. Number three is digital time off. Again, even if it's not a full day that I have regular digital time off. Before using Evernote, so I mentioned this yesterday in my blog post. I went through and I took my inbox from 300 to 21 last night. And it was because a lot of things that were in my inbox were ideas. They weren't like people I needed to respond to as much as they were ideas. They were um, input, suggestions, things I wanted to read. And so I pulled all those over into Evernote. And if you're not familiar with Evernote, evernote.com. It's something I've wanted to figure out how to use since like 2011. And somehow I've just finally intuitively figured it out. So I encourage you to play with that if you're kind of looking for a more online organized system too. Number five, run 52 weeks of tranquility, the free offering that I mentioned to you at the beginning, launch VIP days, seven regular creativity, so et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and I had 15 list listed. And then so they're also on the back page. So what I'm going to say space here for is uh, collaging and then writing more. But these are my overarching year streams. Now, in the past, I've broken them out by businesses and done them on separate tags for each of the businesses. But this year, what I did instead, I just I put them all there. It's all together. It all ties in being really present with regard to when I'm working on tranquility, um, having regular creativity when I'm working on tranquility, tranquility, the clothing line. Uh, regular creativity by having peonies around, by having twinkle lights and mason jars, you know, little things like that. I want these to infuse my life. So those are my year streams. So spending a little time with that. And if you need more time, feel free to come back to this. Or if you're listening to the recording, just pause and then pick back up. Because the next thing we're moving into is our month streams. So you may be like, how in the world is that really different? Well, the month streams are what you want to accomplish this month, right? So here are mine. My month streams, I have a, a quite a few listed. This is from the washi, it wasn't washi tape, it's called washi um, stickers that were in your ephemera packets, which I thought were really fun. But these are kind of my dreams, the things that I want to accomplish in January. So like reading essentialism, I want to pull together an editorial calendar. I want to host an inspiring play shop. That's today, that's right now. Uh, submit insurance, morning smoothie and meditation. So again, these are just some productive team meetings. I have some team meetings scheduled in 2015 or in January. So those are things. Love more, give more, breathe deeper, open. And then I got to check off. I've crafted my month's dreams. So take a moment. And, you know, we spent a little time, just a smidgen, and I know you probably need more time than what I've given you on your dreams. But now think about in January, what is it that by February 1st or January 31st, if you had accomplished, you would feel good. You would feel like I've done really, really great this month. And it may be as simple as I want to clean out a closet, right? And I want to reconnect with someone. So it can be two things, you know, and these aren't so much just to do's. There are a lot about kind of projects or even how you want to feel like love more, give more breathe deeper. So think about what are some of your dreams for January? What is it you want to see? What would you like? What would you be happy with coming out of January of this month? So I'm going to give you just a few moments to work with that while I, I'll just kind of work in mine a little bit. And also, if you have a date stamp, date stamps are super fun. And you can kind of go through and 
This is one from Smash, which is really, really cute because it has all these sweet little sayings. But, you know, I like to go through and add different things. So just taking a few moments to kind of pin ideas around your month streams. A little stamp pad. So I'm just uh, January 2nd. And the reason I'm noting this is because that's the day I wrote the dreams. So voila, today is January 2nd. And what's neat about this actually last year, I used this and I went through and I stamped every single day. So these are really fun. And these are just little date stamps. You can get this. I think I got it at Tarche, but you can get regular ones at Office Depot. They're kind of from the old library books. And um, of course, I have library cards, and those were in your ephemera packets. And these are really, really great. They're wonderful for putting dates, and they even have a due date on them. So if you wanted to kind of write out some of the things that you're hoping for, you're dreaming of, and then you could use the pockets that were in your ephemera packet. So the pockets look like this, and they're the old kind of library pockets. And then you could insert them there. Or you could even make your own pockets with an envelope. So that's kind of one of the fun things is that you can just continue to add and add and add and collage. And that's what I plan to do. Mine get pretty chubby by the end of the year because there's a lot of different layers added. All right. So month streams, hopefully you've gotten a few there. And again, you can use stamps, washi tape. One thing that I did last year that I really enjoyed, and this is just kind of a fun thing and it adds really sweet layers, is you layer the edges. So I'll show you what I mean. So you take your washi tape and you add it to, you would typically do this lying down or with the page laying down. I am doing it up just to show you. I'm going to lay it down just so I can get it flat. And this is just, it's really, it's so pretty because then you'll have all these edges. So you just take your washi tape and then you fold it over love this because you can do it with all sorts of different washi tapes and then all your edges are going to have this really sweet coating and and it just kind of adds a little more a little more fun and then i'll know too oh the the gold chevron that's my year streams all right so the next one we're going to do is the wheel of life and again i have kind of rushed you through these but it's really just to kind of show you how to work on them and I want you to know that you have plenty of time. Please feel free to go back and continue to add to it and add using ephemera. The great thing about ephemera, it can be found objects. You know, these are kind of my go-tos. I'd mentioned to you the kind of washi, the masking sticker tape. So this was what was in the ephemera packets. But you could use any sort of stickers, of course. And I love these little, the little manila tags that were in there. And these are cute too. You can take Baker's twine, tie them around, tie them into your planner. I did that with my last year's one and it was like my cat's favorite thing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is turn to page 154. And I want to do the winter wheel of life together. All right, so... I started doing this for our video, our promo video that we created. And so with this, I want to just kind of talk through it because it's something I do encourage you to do seasonally and just in case some of these categories are a little confusing. So again, page 154, and then, you know, there's a place for the date. So I'm going to use my trusty little date stamper. Voila. All right. So of course you can hand write it too with your marker. And then let's start with the upper right. Okay. So work. So this is career. And how satisfied are you on a scale from zero to 10? Zero is not satisfied at all. 10 is super duper satisfied. And you'll see there are lines to help you on figuring out kind of where to draw. So for work, you know, how satisfied are you with things on a scale from one to 10? Work being career. Style. 
So style is not so much about the way you dress. It's also the way you present yourself to the world. So think of your office environment. Think of your communication style. Think of the stationery you use. Think of the various ways in which you present your personality. So style. Creativity. Creativity is how satisfied you are in your ability to kind of get creative things done. And, and think about it really, honestly, getting dressed in the morning can be a creative act. So it doesn't mean you have to be painting. But how satisfied are you if you were to think about creativity? Sorry, I've got a pug on my lap, so I'm having to adjust. Um, but how satisfied are you in your level of creativity in life? I mean, honestly, I think like these twinkle lights, super creative. So those are ways in which I like to infuse my life with creativity is just a little sense of sweet touches of beauty. So for you, it might be baking. It may be knitting. It may be taking calligraphy classes. So again, on a scale from zero to 10. Dreams on a scale from zero to 10. And dreams are how satisfied are you with where you are at this point, this day, this moment with your dreams? Do you feel like you're moving in a good direction? Do you feel a little stagnant? Do you feel a little unclear? So these are all things that would contribute to you on a scale of zero to 10. Do gooding. And I also encourage you to really just kind of go with your gut on this. So not to overthink it. Because you'd be like, oh, is it a seven or is it an A? Is it a 7.5? You know, it's like, just choose. Just put it down and go with whatever comes first. Kind of like a multiple choice question, right? Whatever you're drawn to initially. So do gooding. This is the way in which you give back. In some way, how is it that you are making a difference? And do gooding is anything from bringing in treats for your office, saying thank you, activism, advocacy, donating to charity, volunteering, smiling at a stranger, paying attention to the barista, not being on your cell phone whenever you're ordering. These are all ways in which we can do good. And so where would you rate yourself on a scale of zero to eight or zero to 10? Nesting. This is your home environment. Okay. So this is Whenever you come home, how do you feel at home? When you walk into the door, how do things feel? How satisfied are you with your home environment? Next is self-care. So self-care is all about how good you're taking care of yourself. Again, for women, this is something that often falls by the wayside because we're so busy being a caretaker. So what I want you to think about, this is something that Sam Bennett said in a podcast that came out probably in the fall or the summer. Get more done or get it done, I think was the name of her book. But her thing, she gave the analogy of a teacup. And she was like, the teacup needs to be full. And that's your self care. And what overflows is what you're able to give to others. And what happens oftentimes is we give, 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 and then we don't have time for ourselves. And if there are any droplets left, then we take those for self-care. But I loved her idea of like, really, your teacup has to be completely full before you can give to others. So self-care, where are you there? Zero to 10. And then mindfulness. Mindfulness can be replaced with any word that resonates. Spirituality, the idea with mindfulness is, I am a huge mindfulness proponent, but it really, it, it is all about, uh, to me, it's about spirituality, about how connected you are to um, the moment, to the people in front of you, to making a difference in the world. You know, John Kabat-Zinn defines mindfulness as paying attention with awareness in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So how are you there? All right, so then you look and then you know which areas are a little lower than you'd like. 
And then you come up with some action steps to increase areas that are lower than you would like. So say, for example, if creativity is lower than you would like, then you note, maybe you sign up for a class, or maybe you go on an artist date, or maybe you meet up with a friend who loves to knit and loves to teach knitting. If mindfulness is low and you want to create an action step there, then maybe what you do is set aside five minutes every day to connect within, connect to your breath. Or maybe you sign up for a retreat, a mindfulness retreat, Ooh, a day long, silent day long weekend or a week long, or there's even month longs, which are amazing. So those are, that's how we use the winter wheel of life. And when we do this seasonally, again, we put the date down at the bottom and then we write in our action steps here. Okay. So those were the exercises I wanted to take you through to kind of get you set up for the year. And then of course, just a reminder to feel in the, uh, the month and to really know kind of what are the pieces that stand out as things that you want to be mindful of and pay attention to. So these are kind of bigger things like we're going to go see Gigi, you know, at the Kennedy Center. So I put that in and I have a big meeting that day. You know, I'm going to be in Oklahoma. I'll be in West Virginia these days. So that these are just like bigger things. They're not like my typical um, to do's, but that way I'm aware of like what's going on on those particular days. So I just wanted to show that kind of layout also. So we're almost out of time and I wanted to see if there are any questions or anything. I think I've heard there are no questions yet that have come through via email and that would go to Lebo at KimberlyWilson.com. So if you have something, please send it along. And I know actually Nikki in Scotland, she was, she said that her email didn't come through with regard to a question about the anthology and her question relates to the day book, but it was, how do you get started with journaling whenever it feels quite intimidating and it's scary to look at the blank page. So I wanted to bring it up because I would like for you to be able to feel that you can use your day book as a journal. And I wanted to answer Nikki's question. So Nikki, the thing that comes to mind that I want to really encourage is that you use, feel free to use your inspiration pages and also know that too, maybe it could just be one word, a one word journal for that day. It could be something that you want to remember. And really my favorite question that I like to kind of hone in on and sit down with is what am I feeling right now? Like what's going on within? And I, I hope that that will allow you to get started. I think journal writing is a very powerful tool. I've always kind of thought of it as really um, reasonably priced therapy, you know, and the fact that it's your ability to kind of like become more self-aware. So, and to recognize patterns. So I encourage you to get started with it. And there's a lot of really great books out there on journal writing also that may resonate, but check out some of the prompts in this book and see if there are any, any that appeal. And then last, I wanted to mention uh, just a little challenge. And this is a challenge to infuse your days with tranquility. So reflect on really how you want them to feel and how you want to show up. So, you know, it's a brand new year. How do you want to show up in 2015? How do you want to show up at the office on Monday? How do you want to present yourself? How do you want to be? And, you know, just a reminder that the only thing we can change or that we have power over is ourselves. And, you know, oftentimes we, we barely can control ourselves, right? Our own kind of... Um, triggers or things we're drawn to. So recognizing that I think can take a lot of pressure off whenever we remind ourselves of that. Lighten up your expectations. I, I love this. I learned this in a mindfulness workshop that expectations are planned resentments. It's like, oh, that's so powerful. So lighten expectations, forego perfection and bask in being. And I just want to say a big thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions that come up in the future, please feel free to pass those along. And I'm, of course, Kimberly at KimberlyWilson.com. I hope to see you on our Daybook Facebook group and also at our 52 Weeks of Tranquility uh, online course. So thank you so much and have a delightful, delightful new year. Namaste.